Okay, this will be the first in a series that I have taught before, and I really enjoy teaching this one, and the title of it is Seven Steps to Learn the Scriptures. Now, I know I have some of it on YouTube, but not too many people go into the past archives, and it's always good to kind of redo things. Uh, You know, I have several ideas that I want to bring forth, you know, maybe a, a series on physical health Uh, And keep going through Revelation, keep going through uh, Old Testament survey, which I haven't done for a while, and keep going through American history. A lot of things. The Bible is a limitless book, and there's so many subjects that a person can uh, learn or glean from in the Bibles. And uh, Seven Steps to Learn the Scriptures, there's an article It's sort of kind of an outline, sort of kind of an article. It's in the back of the 4th, 5th, and soon coming 6th edition, right after Revelation, between Revelation and uh, the maps. I'm going to try to put a PDF link uh, down in the description below. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that accomplished. So I'm not going to go in great detail in the introduction here. Uh, The seven steps to learn the Bible. The first three are pretty quick to go through, and the last three are pretty quick. That middle one is the one that's the heart of the issue. So this um, article outline, Seven Steps to Learn the Scriptures, offers a simple path for the prudent student to personally research the Bible with sincerity and honesty. Okay, and the idea, what I really enjoy about this is that a person is helped for a lifetime And it's up to you, the individual, to do your part to uh, study. You can't blame, uh, you know, any other teacher for your lack of understanding of the Bible. Uh, You have to put forth the effort. I find it interesting that if you put a dramatic title or an exciting title for a video, people will tend to watch it. But if you just put something very plain, and they know it's about the Bible, but they're not drawn to it as much. And of course, that's a problem in the American culture, is because Americans, including myself, have been raised on TV, and we sort of get a distorted viewpoint of life, where in TV... Life uh, on the movies is full of action. You know, from one exciting thing to another, bang, bang, kiss, kiss, you know. I mean, just from one drama to another. But that's not life, my friend. Life is sag, bag, and drag. And when you learn to enjoy that, then you can be content in life. So, Seven Steps to Learn the Scriptures uh, provides a pattern or an outline uh, for the individual, but you and I need to be the one to put forth the effort uh, in studying the Bible for ourselves, each individually, so that you can be personally persuaded in the truth. Okay, a chef who prepares a meal is able to help someone for that specific time. But a chef who guides a person in the preparation of meals is able to help for a lifetime. A Bible teacher who prepares a sermon is able to help the listener for a specific time. And it might last longer. But if that Bible teacher guides a person to research the Bible personally, is able to help them for a lifetime. Uh, In fact, that is what the Spirit of God does, is he shows you and I techniques to understand the Bible in order to fully understand ourselves. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Paul 
admonished Timothy with these words, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So the idea of this is that when you as a student in this case, become my age, hopefully you will add to what I have given and will far exceed me. You know, people, Bible believers, uh, there's a name commonly known amongst Bible believers, Dr. Peter Ruckman, but if his students limit their knowledge to him, then they are not doing him service. They must exceed what they've learned from him. The student should uh, be in advance of the teacher when that student is at that age because that individual has put forth the effort to study. One of the outstanding teaching methods in the Bible is the use of analogies, parables, similitudes, okay, where in Hosea 12, verse 10, God would use the prophets Hosea, uh, and he would use them as examples in similitudes. Hosea 12, 10, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used Similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Similitude, similar. Okay, and so this is the best way of teaching the Bible, the best way of understanding the Bible. There are two key words for these (coughs) similarities are like and as. This is like this. This is as that. This is like this. This is as that. It's not that, but it is as that. It is not that, but it's like that. And so you take what a person understands to explain something they don't understand. Jesus used the natural birth uh, that Nicodemus understood to explain the supernatural birth, which Nicodemus had a difficult time understanding. Now, these two little words, like and as, will uh, give you more understanding in the Bible than any words you'll find in a Bible. And so here's my analogy. The Holy Bible is like a survival kit. Okay, I personally, raised on a farm, uh, like to do things myself, built my own log house, cut uh, trees out of the woods, peeled the bark by hand, built my own house, took a two-day log class to learn how to do it, and it provides great satisfaction. Okay, the Holy Bible is like a survival kit, you know, a bug out bag. Okay, do you have a bug out bag or do you have uh, the things that you need to survive anywhere? The following items allow a survivalist to survive almost anywhere. Okay, a sword or a knife. Okay, and then, now I'm not going to go in detail on these things, but uh, if you wanted to, you could use these to teach a class. And I give the references. A sword or a knife, Ephesians 6, 17, referring to the Word of God. Hammer and nails. Why? So you can build a structure. And then there's the references. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 11. Ecclesiastes is a perfect Sermon delivered by a preacher. The word preacher is found seven times. Uh, Fire. Fire can be used for cooking, heat, light, and then the passage that likens the word of God to fire. A lamp. Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Seeds. Okay, you need a seed to be able to grow food. You need like heirloom seeds. Okay, these hybrid seeds uh, have a limitation. So if you have an heirloom seed, then you can uh, grow and then you can uh, harvest the seed and turn around and replant the seeds that you get in the harvest. 
And Luke 8, 11 pictures the word of God to be a seed, a mirror, or a looking glass. And there's the cross-reference or the references a person can use. A mirror, where you're looking into a mirror, you're looking into the Bible, the reflection off of the Bible is Jesus Christ, and then hopefully you begin to uh, be changed into his image. And the Bible is like food. Okay, food in particular. What type of a food? Job said that he said, Neither have I gone back from thy commandments. I've esteemed thy words more than my necessary food. Now, we can extend that out, okay, where as food is for the body, so words are for the soul. Okay, and the Bible is like all kinds of food for the body. And as I mentioned, I may do, I'd like to do a series on uh, health, physical health, the types of food that a person should eat. You know, when you leave the produce section in the grocery store, you are entering the non-food section is what you're doing. And in order to sustain life, you need living food. And that's what raw fruits and vegetables, that should be the mainstay of your diet, raw fruits and vegetables, uh, where you get life from living food because those foods are alive. They're living. If you take a carrot, okay, you put a carrot on the counter and you'll see that eventually that uh, it will start producing roots because it's still alive. But the Bible itself is like food. You want to start off with milk, the sincere milk of the word for that baby, 1 Peter 2, verse 2. Not formula, not, not, not cow's milk. If, you're gonna, if you can't use mama's milk, maybe goat's milk would be our, your, an, an alternative. Okay, and then the Bible is also likened to fruit and vegetables. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 19, it states this, uh, my fruit, okay, referring to the Bible, so Proverbs 8 and 9 is, is in essence the Bible having, if the Bible was given vocal cords to speak to you and I audibly, Proverbs 8 and 9 is what it would say. And Proverbs 8 19 says, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice Silver. Proverbs 25, verse 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. As I said, f as food is to the body, words are to the soul. Job 12, verse 1, Job said this, do not the ear try words and the mouth taste his Meat. Okay, so here's food for thought. The Bible is like food. Milk to start off your life as an infant. Fruit and vegetables, which are living food. Adam ate fruit and vegetables grown above the ground before the fall. And then after the fall, he added the vegetables below the ground. The idea of eating of meat did not come in play until Noah. I, I'm not saying I don't, if people didn't eat meat before that, I'm not certain. But as far as recorded in the Bible, it was first mentioned to Noah after the flood. Okay, the Bible is like bread. Okay, in Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, that's where... Moses mentioned it to Israel, and then the Lord Jesus quoted a portion of that passage uh, when he was tempted by Lucifer in Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4. 4. And he likens, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the Bible is likened to bread. What kind of bread? White bread? Nah, nah, nah. You know, it's got to be maybe barley bread or rye or wheat or something like that. And then uh, the Bible's likened to meat. Uh, yeah, you know, a young man always wants to get his teeth sunk into something. And meat would be the meteor doctrines of the Bible itself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, in verse 
let's see, in verse 2, Paul said, I have fed you with milk, that's the baby Christians, and not with meat. Not with meat. They weren't ready for the meat. Meat are the heavier doctrines of the Bible, and a person should be uh, willing to chew into them heavier doctrines of the Bible. In Hebrews 5, verse 12, for, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have one, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as of have need of milk and not of strong meat. And then Hebrews 13, verse 9, it says, Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is good that a heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have profited them, have not profited them, that have been occupied therein. Now, Americans eat too much meat. I'm not a vegetarian or a fruititarian, uh, you know, we eat meat on occasion, but Americans eat too much of it, and it causes your body to be acidic, which is where disease often can thrive, where fruit and vegetables allows the body to be more alkaline, which is a more healthy situation for the physical body. So here, here in this part, I'm, I'm giving a few ideas on physical health because that's what the Bible does. Okay, and then the fifth kind of food is honey and the honeycomb. Psalm 19, verse 10. Not, not sugar, not aspartame, uh, not those artificial sweeteners. No, no, not that. Not high fructose corn syrup, you know, that's not, you know, that's not that for the good for the body. Honey and honeycomb especially. Oh man, good wheat toast with uh, butter and honeycomb on it. That's got to be the best. And sprinkle some cinnamon on top. That's a healthy thing for the body. Psalm 19 verse 10 makes me hungry thinking about it. Psalm 19.10, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, the much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And in that context, that's referring to the law of God, verse 7, statutes of God, verse 8, okay, judgments of God, verse 9, and he likens it to honey, not sugar, not aspartame, not high fructose corn syrup, that's man's counterfeit of the honey. And the honeycomb. Now, the body can live uh, many days without food. In fact, Moses, Elijah, and the Lord Jesus fasted for 40 days. Uh, the body can, uh, can survive of probably four days without water. I mean, it'd be tough. Maybe four days without water. Uh, and four minutes uh, will likely be the limit uh, to survive without oxygen. Okay, so the Bible is likened to food, but it's also likened to water. What kind of water? Rain water. You'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1, 2, and 3. The water that shall distill, not fluoride, fluoride water, not chlorinated water. Okay, a water from your own cistern would be fine. Okay, and maybe... Uh, you know, water that's filtered well, uh, definitely you don't want to drink the tap water from, you know, the city because, you know, that fluoride and chlorine was, uh, fluoride in particular was used by the Nazis to sedate and calm the prisoners. Uh, but, okay, so the scripture is likened to pure water, Deuteronomy 32, rainwater. And then the psalmist said, wherewith you... Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to that word? So the Bible in the cleansing aspect, the refreshing aspect of water uh, is the likened to the words of God. And then, of course, I've got other scriptures here in the outline where you can uh, further expand upon this on your own time. And the spirit of God is likened to the air. Or the wind. Jesus did that in John chapter 3, verse 8, where he was speaking 
to Nicodemus, where he said, those who are born of the Spirit are like the wind. And that brings us to the, the real teacher of the Bible, is the Holy Ghost. He is the author and interpreter of the Scripture, and he will guide the sincere believer into all truth, as promised in John 16, 13. My friend, claim that promise, John 16, 13, and pray to the author, interpreter, teacher, and guide of the scriptures. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.